and welcome back to Weird Dough. This is gonna be a lot of fingers crossed here. There's tons and tons and tons of ingredients. Oh my God, I think it's working. Is this how you're supposed to hold it? I'm so excited! We have so many steps to go before eating. Here they are. Weird Dough, Kim Joy Bakes. So today we are going to make these white chocolate and orange lady shoe. Let me just tell you guys, this is a huge undertaking. There are four different recipes is part of this one recipe, none of which I've ever made before in my life. So we're gonna make shoe buns, marzipan, creme diplomat, and cracklin. Four new things, four new things. This is gonna be a lot of fingers crossed here. Let's get started. I have so many ingredients over here, it's like spilling over. There's tons and tons and tons of ingredients, and this is only half of the ingredients. This is not like a cake, so there's so many steps and I don't know. I'm a little nervous about doing this. Okay, butter. So this is like a cake. You just take the butter and the sugar and you cream it together. Brown sugar, yum. Start out slow. Handy dandy zester, crank up the butter. Remember the pro tip, fold it down here and zest away. Total today, we need the zest of four oranges. A lot of zesting. One naked little baby orange. I've never made a crackalong before, but I have seen them use it on the show British Bake Off a bunch of times on their shoe buns. So hopefully ours work. Fingers crossed all day long. Here we go. Just combined. Don't overdo it. Now what Kim Joy says to do is to take this mixture that we've just made and make it into a ball using our hands. I mean, it's really sticky, like really sticky. I'm gonna take this ring off. I don't know why I think it's cool to wear a ring. It's not. It is cool to wear a ring. It's not cool to wear a ring when you always use your hands while you're baking. This is so sticky, look. It's mostly butter, let's be honest. Nice and dirty. So now she says to roll it out in between two sheets of plastic. Come on out, baby. Until it is approximately two millimeters thick. I don't know how thick a millimeter is. I kind of like doing this in the plastic though. How's that? Two millimeters? I honestly couldn't tell you. It looks pretty flat. So now we take this and we put it in the freezer. Hopefully that works. <laughs> okay guys, let's make some shoe pastry. First thing you do, chop the butter into the saucepan. Here's our butter. I'm just gonna chop it up right into the pan. Butter moisturizer. I wonder if that's real. I wonder if like butter acts as a good moisturizer. That'll be the next thing. They'll abandon the, the honey and the bees and we'll move on to butter. Bee venom. To puff your face up for a youthful glow. Okay, chop the butter. Now, we add the water. Kosher salt, put it on the stove. Here we go. While we wait for that to bubble, we're gonna combine both of our flours into a bowl. We have our boiling water butter. Now, we add the flour all in one go and start with this wooden spoon until it becomes a smooth ball. Oh my gosh, it's looking rather clumpy here. Oh my God, I think it's working. I think this is what it looks like on the show. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Okay, when do we stop? Pulls away from the sides very easily. It does pull away from the sides rather easily. So I think we did it. This is the beginning of a shoe pastry. You can see how it's peeling easily away from the sides. Look at that, it looks like a monster. Ooh. It really did pull right away from the sides of the bowl. Look at that, almost clean. Kind of crazy. I think we did it right. I can't believe it. Okay, five to 10 minutes while this cools. We'll be back. So it has been a little over 10 minutes. This is still pretty hot, but it doesn't really say in the book if it's supposed to still be hot or if it's supposed to be completely cooled. It just says cool in bowl for five to 10 minutes. So we're gonna go with it. So we take three eggs, one at a time, Crack it in a separate bowl, as usual, pro tip. Egg one, mix on low. Before you add the eggs, it's called a panada, Pana pananda, something like that. Okay, it's combined. Let's add the other one. Egg two. Turning our pananda, our panda, panda bear, into a shoe bun. Okay, so what it's supposed to look like is it will drop off the spoon in a V. So ours is still way too thick. And so what Kim Joy suggests is to crack your third egg, whisk it, and then add it one tablespoon at a time. Oh, it's getting closer. Not quite. That plop is not what we're looking for. But I do think it's working. Okay, let's look at it now. Well, 
Almost. It's not really doing that V that you're looking for. What I mean is that V that they show on the show because I have no idea. Oh, I think this is it. It's so exciting. I think this is what it's supposed to look like. Is this how you're supposed to hold it? I'm not really sure. I got really excited, but let's just put the rest of the egg. And then after that, we'll just call it because we don't want to overdo it. Here's the thing. Look at it inside the bowl. I feel like it looks right. Is this the V? Whoop, whoop. Does this count? I don't know, but we're out of eggs, so we're gonna go with it. I wonder what it, I wonder what it tastes like. Mm. It does not taste good. Ew. It tastes gross. Okay. I guess that's why you fill it with all kinds of sweet, delicious puffs, creams, and things. Top with chocolate and marzipan and everything else, because it by itself, not great. Okay. So now, we're gonna bake it. Here we go. Now it really looks like a V, huh? Look at that. Pretty good. Maybe you just needed a second to calm down. Guys, I feel really excited. I think this is right. I think this is what it's supposed to look like. I'm getting really excited, but we haven't actually baked it yet. Now we're going to pipe 20 little lady shoe bodies. So we're gonna do these 18 here. Let's get our crackling out of the freezer. Kind of crazy. Also kind of looks like a monster. And we're just gonna use this cutter because this is what we have. I don't know if this is gonna work for us. And I think you put it on top. I think because our freezer was too small and we couldn't lay it flat, We'll never, ours is just broken. It's just breaking here. So we're gonna put pieces around, but that's okay. More about the flavor. I'm also not too sure how dainty we should be. Like if we push it too hard, will the air come out? Will they puff up still? Guess we'll find out. I do remember Kim Joy made these on the show and I do remember them saying, your crocolan is a little thick. Ours is gonna be a little thick too, but that shoe pastry, that looks like some good shoe pastry to me. Okay, so our crack along is a little bit of a fail. Next time, I think we'll wrap it like this so we can get it nice and flat in inside of my um, teeny tiny baby freezer. Studio apartment freezer, literally this big. At least I have a freezer though. A lot of West Village studios do not have a freezer. Could never live like that. Here they are before the bake. Okay, they're going in. They bake for 10 minutes. Then we turn it down to 350, then they bake for another 20 minutes. So in 30 minutes, these shoe buns will be baked. Here we go. Okay, so we have about six minutes left on our little happy shoe buns in there, and you'll be glad to know they're puffing up so cute. They look so good, so good. Okay, so we're gonna try. No, we're not going to try. We are going to make creme diplomat in a medium saucepan. You add milk. That's a lot of milk. The zest of three oranges, and we're going to add a little vanilla bean paste. Three quarters teaspoon of vanilla bean paste. Oh, vanilla bean, so good. Even though I said the pro tip with Christina Tossi that vanilla is, you're not supposed to spend all your money on vanilla, this still is like so good. And since I already have it, might as well save it. Now we're gonna put this on the stove. We need seven large egg yolks. Let's separate our eggs. Now what we're making, is a creme patisserie, AKA creme pat, which they are always making on the show. It seems hard. I've never made it. Hopefully we can pull it off. Kim Joy's recipe, I don't know if they all do because I've never made it before, but hers has 60 grams of cornstarch in it, which seems like a lot of cornstarch to me. So I bet there's no way it won't sit. I just love the way egg yolk feels. I love it. Highly recommend using your hands. That's another pro tip from Christina Tossi from my milk bar class. Use your hands because then you can feel all the egg white coming out. I'm not the only one that uses their hands all the time. Guess I better have an egg white omelet for, uh, for dinner. <laughs> okay, we're gonna pause with our egg yolks for a second and take our shoe buns out. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Oh, look at that beautiful little army of shoe buns. Stunning. I'm so excited. Guys. <gasps> look how good they look. Oh my God, I am so excited. I don't know if this is beginner's luck or Kim Joy writes a killer cookbook or what, but these look awesome. They are so light and fluffy. I can't believe it. I'm so excited. Okay, let's contain ourselves for a minute here and move forward with the recipe. This looks like it's out of her book. I am so excited. I keep saying it. I just can't believe it worked. Okay, so we have our egg yolks here. Seven gloriously yellow egg yolks. Thank you, little chickens. And we have caster sugar. So we're gonna put our caster sugar in there and we're gonna whisk this like crazy. Should've used the hand mixer. I'm sweating. Woo! 
between this 400 degree oven and this arm workout, it is hot in here. Okay. Whew. Enough of that. We add corn flour. So much. You see how much it is? It will certainly thicken. I mean, I'd be surprised if it didn't, but who knows? First time with a creme pat. But our shoe buns came so good. I feel like I'm just basically a French pastry chef now. It smells incredible, of course. Now, while whisking, we add the rest. Okay, so it's nice and whisked together. Here's what it looks like now. Back in. Now, back to the stove. Now, the one thing about making this is you have to whisk it constantly until it becomes really thick. So you need to set, but not curdle. Put my hair up. A little hot here. So our mixture is very thick. Look how thick it is, it looks like porridge. I don't know if that's right, but it's very thick. Now we're gonna take this orange liqueur and we're gonna pour that in. This is triple sec, orange liqueur. Three to three and a half tablespoons. Three, and we're putting the half. Pretty thick to me, it smells good. I don't know what it's supposed to look like. It looks chunky. And I don't know if that's from the orange zest because there's like so much orange zest. Like is that what that is? Or did I ruin it? I don't know, we're putting it in the fridge. So now we have all of our shoe buns ready and we're going to start to put everything together. These came out really good too, the little heads. Nice. Now we're gonna make the marzipan. I've never made marzipan before. I remember on the Bake Off, Ruby, who was a contestant in Kim Joy's season, Ruby was like, who makes marzipan? Just buy marzipan. I mean, I agree, but also let's just try it once and see how it comes out, right? Why not? Here's our marzipan so far. I don't even know if I like marzipan. We have some food dye here. Squeeze a little food dye in there. Whoa, that was a lot, as usual and we're gonna knead it together and dye the marzipan blue. And also probably our pastry board. It's hard to knead because it's very, very sticky. Ugh. This is a real mess. Okay, it's coming together sort of. How am I always completely covered in color? Some people are tidy and some people are not. I am not. I feel like the two most untidy contestants on the Bake Off were Alice and Laura. Both of those ladies were very untidy and they both got to the vinyl. So there's something about being just a little untidy that gets you far, I guess, in baking. Oh, look at this marzipan. Oh my gosh, so pretty. <laughs> I gotta love it, I wanna taste it. Mmm, it's pretty good. Chewy. Our candy melts are melted. Now you wanna try to get it as smooth as you can because we're gonna cut this into little circles for the hat. Work quick, cause it will harden. Got a lot going on here. Now, we're gonna make the filling for our shoe buns. Here's our creme pat. It's totally cool. Let's taste it. It's very, very gluey. It tastes like orange custard. Okay, that's what it's supposed to taste like. Now, we take heavy cream. This recipe is like a lot. There's so many moving parts. There are so many steps. It is really hard. Okay, so we're gonna take our creme pat and we're gonna put it in this bowl. Right now, it is very, very set. So, we need to loosen it up a little bit while our heavy cream whips into soft peaks. Look how well that works. Here's where our French patisserie goes awry. We bought the machine, why are we using our hands all day long? Let's use the machine. We went a little over with our heavy cream, a little more than a soft peak, but I think it'll be okay. What Kim Joy says is, when you mix the two of them together, it goes from a creme pat to a creme diplomat. Very fancy. So we're gonna mix it together. Look at that. So appetizing. Looks so delicious. Okay, let's just whip it all together. Creme diplomat. It tastes great. I just don't know if the texture is right. We're going to pipe the creme diplomat into the shoe bun. We have made so many things, I don't even have any utensils left. I don't know what to use. Oh, this cool Harry Potter one. Great. Scoop and scrape it into the jar. Here we go. Oh, the bag is gonna break for sure. Okay, this tip does not work. So I got us some different tips here. I don't know how to get it into the shoe bun, but we're gonna try this one. Oh my god. Ta-da! Let's see if, oh, there we go. Now it's coming out. Second try. I got a hole in my bag, but it's full. We're gonna do them all. 
I just saw it pop up on the top. <laughs> oh, it did. I overfilled it. <laughs> kind of love it. Orange Diplomat Cream Puff. I am overfilling every single one by accident. Yes. I love when it puffs up. It's kind of maybe my new favorite thing. Do we put it in the little ones? I don't know. Let's consult the book. It just says in the shoe buns. So I'm going to go with yes. Woo. This is the longest bake probably ever. I have been doing this for a lot of hours. <laughs> I now see on the show where they're like, oh, I have to fill every bun. I'm going to run out of time. It takes forever to fill these little baby buns. I'm dying to try it. I'm dying to try it. We have so many steps to go before eating. So many steps. Last one. Ah. It was really hard not to eat it, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna wait. Okay, it's time. We are going to make our little shoe lace. Circle of marzipan. Put a little royal icing to act as the glue. Then you put your marzipan dress on. Oh, look at your pretty little dress. I love it. Now, she needs a head. So first we'll put the face before we put it on the body. We've got our edible food writing pen here and let's give her a little happy eyes. These markers are hard to write on this bun. Cute. So then we put a little bit of foil icing to glue on the head. There's her head. Oh, we might need a bigger dress. Then we're gonna try to make her a little hat. This cutter might actually be a little big. So you dip the cutter in hot water for a second, then cut out your chocolate. Easier said than done. There we go, one hat. You put the royal icing, we'll put it on the head. That hat is really funny. Oh my God, that hat, okay. I love it. Okay, so I got a bunch of these dried edible flowers to put at the top of the hat. Some royal icing on that. And then we put that on the hat. Oh my gosh, it's so precarious. She is cute. Then we pipe some little dots around her dress, like it's lace. I'm afraid to pick it up. I'm afraid it's gonna fall. And there she is. Ladies and gentlemen, here is a shoe bun lady. She's a classy broad. Should we make another one? Let's cut out our marzipan. Head, she's very formal, this one. Put the head on the body. Let's do the dots before we do the hat because the hat is a little precarious. The head is a little precarious, I'm not gonna lie. Keep your head on. Let's try to get a circle out here. Let's put her hat on. Oh my God, these hats are so big for their head. Hello, darling, let's go to tea. I look so regal. Cute, I love it. Let's do one more and then we'll eat one. <coughs> put her head on, let's do her dots. I don't think the water trick even works. Just cause it's in the book doesn't mean you have to do it. Giant flower. She's gonna be the most proper. Mm -hmm. I love her. It's her little weird growth on her head. Now, I am going to do all of the buns, but I think we should taste one now before we do all the buns, cause I'm dying to. So let's eat our little lady that we made first. She's so cute. I love her little outfit and her little side to the side head. But I think we're just gonna eat the head first with the chocolate and the flour. Here we go. Wow, oh, it's good. It's kind of crazy good. Guys, I can't believe I made a shoe pastry and it turned out good. And that creme pat tastes great. I don't think it's curdled or anything. Let's try the bottom with the marzipan. Look at that. Mm, marzipan is so good. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I have so many to eat. I'm so lucky. It was really, really good. Okay, I'm gonna decorate all the ladies. I'll be back. Here they are, our beautiful little ladies. I love them. Look at this hat. Look at this chrysanthemum hat. Very dramatic. These are a very dramatic group of ladies here. She's a little chubby, which means you wanna eat her most. She's very proper with her hat. Everybody looks great and it smells so good. They look awesome, don't they? So I'm super proud that I made shoe buns and creme patisserie today. I feel very accomplished. I have successfully dirtied every single solitary dish, mixing bowl, and utensil in my entire house. <laughs> but I think it was worth it because they came out awesome. They look really good. Today we made four things 
that we've never made before and it was a success. And we learned a few things. I think uh, for the circles, for the hats, I might like use a like a circle mold or something because it was kind of hard to cut or perhaps maybe a bigger sheet. I think with the creme pat, I think it's right. It tastes really good. I think I need to make a plain one without orange and see because it might be a little chunky from the orange or it might just be how it's supposed to be. I'm really not sure. Cause I think of this, you're, everyone's gonna get mad, but I just think of like a Boston cream donut. Is it supposed to be like a Boston cream donut? I'm really not sure. I would say there's no reason to make your own marzipan because it tastes good, like this is good, but it's not better than the store-bought. It's not like making your own frosting where it tastes like so good if you make it yourself. This is pretty much the same. Ruby's right. Ruby is right, of course. So that's it. This is our, can it be called patisserie? I don't know, it's pretty giant, but it's French. So we made some French pastry. We were pretty much Julie Child over here making French pastry or, you know, ratatouille, although he doesn't do pastry. We're basically Julia Child, <laughs> but of desserts and American. Oh, she was American. That's enough about Julia Child. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up if you have thumbs, and feel free to subscribe. If you want to see the behind the scenes footage, follow me on Instagram.